Hi everyone, I am Lindsay and welcome to Inside the Hem Holiday. Woo this is where I dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This holiday season, I'm bringing something special, 30 days of festive fashion. That means every day we will explore a new sewing project idea to inspire your holiday wardrobe, whether you're going for cozy or chic or a little bit glam. Join me each day as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. Let's dive into today's festive project. I absolutely have to start out with the quintessential holiday look, which is a party dress. I'm starting out with a party dress for two reasons. One, it's a look that more people will be looking for help with ideas for. And two, it takes a little bit longer to source materials and sew it up than some of the other ideas that I have planned for this series. To me, a party dress is a flattering dress or silhouette um, that has some sort of intrinsic detail or something special to it. A little black dress or a red number for holiday gatherings are great places to start when brainstorming for a holiday party dress. This outfit is perfect for those of you who are into vintage glam like retro silhouettes, bold patterns, and luxe details inspired by decades past. It also works really well if you're more of a glam and glitzy gal with a bold look with sequins, metallics, and statement accessories. Simplicity 9916 fits both aesthetics. This vintage Simplicity's 1960s one shoulder dress comes in two lengths. It's a line dress with a side zipper, is pleated over one shoulder with a self fabric bow that is draped. View one is ankle length and has a left side slit. View two is regular length. All right, let's take a closer look at Simplicity 9916 my ideal party dress for the holidays. Um, okay, so it is a one shoulder design, which if you know me, if you've been following me for a minute, you know I'm not the hugest fan of a one shoulder design, but I do think for something special, special occasion, I don't know, I can maybe make an exception. I do think this one is really elegant. Um, I love that it has like a little bit of nod to vintage, but not like in your face vintage. Um, and it would be beautiful in a variety of occasions for a in a variety of fabrics. But we have the little pleats that come up into the shoulder here. And then I'm pretty sure this part of the bow, well, the whole part of the bow is like almost like just laid on top. And then this little wrap is what's holding it onto the shoulder. Uh, we also have some fisheye darts in the front. And then you have two lengths. You have the little just below the knee length and then you have ankle length with a slit on the side. I'm pretty sure the slit has to be on the side and not the back because there's not a center back seam but we'll look at that whenever we get closer to whenever we look at these other images. <clears throat> okay here's the long one again in kind of like a print like doesn't this one especially with this little like arm bangle doesn't it look like kind of tropical like you'd wear it I don't know on a cruise or something right then we have the long white version obviously suitable for a wedding the long white gloves are just really special i think they, they look really good however if you look at this arm too long <laughs> something's not right here this is her elbow it's just really long <laughs> i mean whose arm is coming down to their knee <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but anyways, the more I look at it, the weirder it looks. Um, this one was a little weird too with this hand, but we're not gonna... <laughs> That's not the point of this video, okay? <clears throat> this is the short version. Um, still has the fisheye darts. Pay attention to this little detail here. I absolutely love that they added like a little brooch. You could also do like a contrast fabric here. Uh, maybe something with sequins or something like that on that little band that wraps around or you could do the whole bow in a contrast fabric as well that would also be beautiful and then here's like a just kind of like fun flirty like cocktail party kind of version in butter yellow all right they are not giving us photos of the back so looking here front back so there is a center back seam so you could move this slit to the center back i think that would 
Um, definitely make it look a little bit more column-like, a little bit more chic, um, but it does also have fisheye darts in the back and the front. So that's what's giving you the silhouette, that um, the illusion of having a waist um, because it's pulling in the fabric at the sides and helping you have kind of like show off your figure a little bit. Okay, back to the back of the envelope. We are looking at suggested fabric. So obviously this is for our purposes, a holiday garment. So some of these will apply and some of them will not, but they're recommending everything from brocade to cottons and cotton blends, crepe, linen, pewdiesui, PK, satin, silk prints, silk shantong, silks, synthetics, and synthetic blends, velveteen, and voile. So that really runs the gamut year-long type of options there. It, I mean, summer will be linen. You know, we have the, um, where was the, well, the silks and all of that are really great for um, the holidays, as is brocade. Cotton and cotton blends, that could be like a spring version, summer version. You get the idea. All we need for Notions is a 14-inch zipper and some bias binding, which is optional. Um... You, uh, yeah, you could make self-binding. I wonder what it's for. I wonder where it goes and why it's optional. That's interesting. We have sizes 6 to 14, I think, and then 16 to 24. I think that's what it was. And that is a bust of 30 and a half to 46 inches, a hip of 32 and a half to 48 inches. Finished garment measurements, we have... Both views, bust, waist, and hip. So it looks like, um, what is that? Two and a half inches in the bust. That feels appropriate with those pleats there. And then we're going to skip the waist because with the waist, you could futz around with the um, fisheye darts to help you achieve what you're looking for there. But with the pattern, it comes with two inches of ease, which again is reasonable. And then the hip has two and a half inches of ease as well. So kind of the same top to bottom in terms of ease, which is giving you that column look. I do think that those ease quantities make perfect sense. They are in line with the illustrations. Um, you'd be comfortable, but you would still get the column like look. Um, if it were me, I'd be fitting based on the largest part of my body, which is my hips. And then I would back into my waist and hips. No, sorry, waist and bust. All right, and then fabric requirements. It looks like for the long one, we would need up to three and a quarter yards of fabric, depending on your size, um, assuming you're buying 60 inch wide fabric. And then for your lining, you'd need three and three eighths, assuming that's 45. But sometimes garment linings do come in 60 inches as well. I imagine you just buy the same quantity of both. For the short version, you would need a yard less. So maybe depending on how expensive your fabric is, you could make the short one versus the long one. Um, but yeah, that's what the pattern calls for. Taking inspiration from Ready to Wear, I found this Dress the Population dress, which has a similar elegant one shoulder neckline and a figure hugging silhouette. This dress has a waist seam, which our pattern does not. So you can get a feel for what that would look like if you ended up hacking the pattern to add one. Adding a waist seam is just one way for a manufacturer to save money since it takes less fabric to sew up this design because it has smaller pattern pieces. So if you want to save on fabric, this is a good way to do it by adding a simple waist seam. This inspo dress is made from a 97% polyester and 3% spandex blend. When you zoom in on the fabric, it also looks like it has some texture to it. So I started my search for a stretch crepe and found this great mid-weight one from Stylemaker Fabrics. This fabric also has a little bit of rayon blended into it, so it will be a little bit softer and drapier than the ready-to-wear version, but the weight that it has will make you feel comfortable and confident with, its, um, with the pattern's body-hugging silhouette. 
And what kind of sewing stylist would I be if I didn't mention that little brooch that is illustrated on the bow in view too? I found one on Amazon that I think would be beautiful with the Stylemaker Fabrics crepe, but feel free to shop some thrift stores in the coming weeks to find something truly special. Who knows, maybe even your mom or your grandmother have something in their stash that would really, really shine. For an even more chic look, if that is even possible, I found this Alexia Maria dress, which retails for $1,500. The thing that separates it from the ready to wear look and the dress the population inspo is the dramatics of the bow. To get this look out of our simplicity pattern, all you'd need to do is heavily interface the bow and then extend the tail to be floor length or even longer. What if it had a train? Construction wise, it's really no harder than the floppy bow. Um, this ready to wear inspiration also gives us an idea of what the longer version of the pattern would look like. This dress is made from a silk and wool blend, which will be pricey, but not impossible to find. I found this Vera Wang dead stock fabric from Mood, which is nearly identical in terms of weight, drape and sheen. It's just $60 a yard, but the long version of the pattern calls for three yards of fabric. We'll need a little bit more to do the bow extension, but girl math and sewing math, it's still cheaper than the ready to wear version. Our version would come in around $200 for fabric, plus the zipper, the interfacing and the lining costs. Whereas, you know, the ready to wear version is $1,500. Not bad for something that's this much of a showstopper. So what do you think? Two party dresses for two different holiday styles. Thanks for joining me today for today's festive frock project. I hope it sparked some inspiration for your holiday sewing. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we'll be creating a chic blazer or modern jacket that is perfect for holiday parties. I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 days of festive fashion. Happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.